so in this video let's talk about rheumatoid arthritis so rheumatoid arthritis is like you know one of the most commonly asked questions okay so we have to know about this this is a this, it's an obligation all right so the main complaint uh, in this condition is that there is polyarthritis so the patient it's in the name right arthritis so the patient has arthritis in multiple areas arthritis is nothing but inflammation which eventually leads to pain so uh, the main complaint is arthritis which is symmetrical so as you can see in this image it is on both the elbow uh, both the shoulders similarly both the feet similarly both the hands it will be like symmetrical so it's not like oh here one i mean uh, one unilaterally uh, one sided shoulder one sided elbow one sided knee it's not like that it's bilateral and symmetrical all right so this is mostly seen in females uh, you know around 30 to 40 year old maybe or less than 40 year old eventually okay so uh, these females present with morning stiffness so the stiffness which lasts more than 30 minutes so as soon as the female or you know whoever th the patient is wakes up she's gonna have uh, some stiffness some pain and some discomfort all right and that will last for more than 30 minutes okay and this uh, the you know your hands are especially involved the patient's hands will especially be involved in this condition so main things that are going to be involved is the wrist wrist mcp and pip so make sure that you know that dip that is the distal in distal interpharyngeal joint is not involved in rheumatoid arthritis it's only proximal uh, metacarpophalangeal and wrist all right uh, and uh, again knee and cervical spine are, can also be in involved cervical spine is especially important so like i said the hands are very important in this condition so uh, one uh, we uh, can also see these deformities called swan neck deformity and boutonniere's deformity which mean that as you can see in this image when the patient is trying to flex the dip this is the dip right distal is nothing but the last one his pip that is this one the proximal one this gets extended very much extended okay so there is pip joint is hyper extended with flexion at the dip joint the the other way around is seen in swan's deformity swan neck deformity where when the patient tries to flex the pip joint like you can see here his dip gets extra elevated extra extended okay so flexion of pip joint with hyper extension of dip joint so this is a clearer image here so you can see that here the patient is trying to extend his pip and his dip that is this one is getting extended sorry flex his pip and his dip is getting extended similarly here the patient is trying to extend his d flex his dip and his pip is getting extended right so uh, you can see this swan here so it's similar to that so just imagine this being the dip all right and this being the pip all right because distal uh, distal is where you can where it ends right so distal is this one and pip is this one so when you're trying when the swan is you know flexing its dip its pip is getting extended right so this is how it looks swan neck de deformity means that all right and the next symptom would be rheumatoid nodules so here you can see in this image the patient has got many nodules over his fingers so these nod nodules are mostly seen on fingers yes but it could also be present on various other parts of his body so when the patient presents with all these symptoms especially the arthritis symptoms uh, he is going to get tested for esr or crp to see how much inflammation is going on in his body so this will be the initial test all right and this will usually be elevated because after all it is an inflammation so these are going to be elevated the patient when he undergoes a cbc it'll uh, that is complete blood count or fbc or full blood count uh, it'll be known it'll be known that the patient has decreased rbcs all right a decreased hemoglobin so that indicates anemia so anemia is seen here because this is a chronic disease so whenever there is a chronic disease your uh, rbcs are being killed your rbcs get destroyed so this leads to anemia so this is usually initially it may present with you know chronic uh, anemia, uh, anemia of chronic disease which will have low iron and all but then eventually it will become normocytic and normochromic all right and the next 
best test that you will do in this condition is to see if the rheumatoid factor is positive in this patient. So rheumatoid factor is a factor which is usually positive in almost all the rheumatic conditions. All right, uh, where uh, RF is negative but the patient has rheumatic conditions that would be called seronegative arthritis which we have discussed before which includes the pair mnemonic. All right, pair B. B for boys, HLA B27. All right. And the most specific and the most appropriate test to be done is anti-CCP. All right. So, citrin cyclic citrinated uh, peptide. So, this is the most specific test for rheumatoid arthritis, which is always positive in rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. So, management. So, the main management is to de uh, decrease, the, you know, to maintain the pain. All right. So, the pain is the main thing that we need to control. So, NSAIDs will be given for pain and corticosteroids will be given for a flare. So, what a flare means is the patient is stable. Okay, he has been on drugs and he is currently stable. But then suddenly he has this flare. Suddenly he has this, you know, severe uncontrollable pain or, you know, different symptoms. That is called flare. So, here you give him some corticosteroids because these will reduce the inflammation rapidly and reduce the pain. Okay which will be rapid okay that's why corticosteroids are preferred in a flare and the main thing that we need to know here is a DMAD okay so DMAD is nothing but disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs so these drugs help in disease help in slowing down the progression of the disease which eventually will prevent deformities from happening deformities like swan neck deformity botanias deformity and all of that all right so the drugs used are methotrexate and sulfazaline which have different moas which we don't need to know in this module all right so that's all about rheumatoid arthritis good luck